Hello and welcome to the latest edition of my podcast today. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the Wig Athletic long-standing Chief Executive Jonathan Jackson and the Wig Athletic Supporters Club Chair Caroline Molyneux, who have today launched a campaign called Save Our Club to raise £500,000 to help save Wig Athletic. So first and foremost, really, what is the concept behind this campaign to raise £500,000 before next Monday? It's up to who wants to answer it. Do you want me to go, well, Jonathan? <laughs> yes, go on. Yes. Uh, okay, so um, I think it's important to say, first of all, Jay, that it's not been an overnight thing. This, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk over the last few days about what are the supporters club doing, um, you know, what this notional deadline of the 31st of August is, is coming up really fast. We all have been working really hard to try to ensure that our club survives and so the idea behind this is that we've, we've already really had a success with the crowdfunder. If it wasn't for that crowdfunder, the fans of Wigan, we wouldn't have been able to fulfil the fixtures and lots of things that have gone with that over the last few weeks. This is different. We're asking fans to contribute in the future of Wigan Athletic and we want a fan's voice. We want it to be a supporter and community-led football club. So the money that we are asking for in return for rewards in the future football club will also uh, potentially buy a stake in that football club for supporters in the future for a trust to hold those shares obviously the the biggest oh, sorry Jeff, was you going to add something i guess i guess from from my point of view jay uh, this has evolved over time um this is my first experience of administration hopefully my last uh, from the 1st of July, when the administrators have walked in, this has been a very steep learning curve for me. Um, and we kind of left the administrators to uh, start that process of, first of all, ensuring that we could complete the season. And I know you spoke with Paul Stanley a couple of times on, on the podcast, and he's explained the whole process of how we had to raise money to keep, keep the club operating. And at the same time, find a solution for the future um, and perhaps new ownership. Um, as, that, as that evolved and as time's gone on, this isn't a great time to be selling a football club. We're in the middle of a, 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 the coronavirus pandemic. Um, there's not a lot of liquidity out there. And so I think, I think the administrators recognise that there might not be an easy solution to this, but at the same time, they're working hard to try and find that, that solution. Um, they indicated to me that there might be a situation where if a buyer wasn't found and the, the right buyer wasn't found in terms of, of, of the financial um, offer or, or, the, or the, the, the future of the football club, just to start looking at working with Caroline, working with the supporters club to perhaps put in a, a I, think, I think they called it a plan B, which was what happens if because the last thing that we wanted was Wigan Athletic to, to cease trading as Berry did last year. And that, for, for a lot of people who, who care about Wigan Athletic, who, who really, um, the future of Wigan Athletic is so important to them, that's unthinkable. So, we still, I guess being the, the former chief executive, I know all the cash flows, I know how it looks, it changes on a day-to-day -day basis as the administrators sell assets and pay off creditors. Um, I also been through, I've also been through the owners and directors tests and the proof of funding with the FL. So I, I've got the relationships there. Um, and, and over time, we've, we've, we've built up a strong relationship with the, with the uh, supporters club uh, as to what we can do. And, and over the last few weeks, we've, we realized that we, we, we had to do something because we have to make sure that this football club survives. And, uh, after discussions with the council over the last couple of weeks, who've been really supportive and, and they, will, they will help the football club because they know how important the football club is to the town, its people, its supporters, its community. Um, and and they'll, they'll be a big part of, of helping us with this. Um, we knew that this was possible. Um, the, the money that we're asking the supporters to raise makes that all possible. Um, and it will, it will be the starting fund, if you like, from, from if, if this is possible, this will go into the Wigan Athletics bank account um, under new ownership and the supporters 
will be part of that football club, as they've always been, but they'll be part of the ownership of that football club. And that's a really compelling story for, for me and hopefully for all the supporters that you know they'll, they'll form a real voice within the club and be part of the decision-making process. If, in the meantime, somebody comes along um, with a, a, an offer that the administrators feel is appropriate for the football club and there is a, a sale process, then that's fine. It could be that, that the supporters club can still be involved in that. And uh, that, that's, that's equally as acceptable as well. It's just about saving the football club and making sure that we're here on the 13th of September to play Ipswich Town away. And, 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 I, th and I know a lot of fans have been concerned about the deadline, the 31st of August, and, and really that's for the administrators to explain, probably in a, in a press conference tomorrow. Um, but we wanted to make sure that people were aware this is a critical time. You know, there's no guarantees of the future of Wigan Athletic. But what, what we are developing is a real and credible um, succession plan um, if there isn't a buyer found. What is the significance of raising the £500,000 and, and what would it achieve? Jonathan? Uh, the, the significance of the, of the £500,000 is that it was a, a target to set. It was a figure. It doesn't achieve anything other than it's funds for the football club, it's funds for the supporters club to um, be part of that football club. Um, it enables the council to, to see how much this football club means to the people of Wigan. And I think if, if supporters can, can communicate that to their local councillors, I think that, that will also help. Um, it's, it funds the football club in the future. That's what it does. It's, it's not a, it's not a, a set amount that, that enables us to survive. It's part of the future of the football club. And if we raise more, the more we raise, the more significant the supporters' voice will be in that future football club. Is that fair, Caroline? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think my, my question to you is, obviously, when, once we raise that £500,000, how is the club sustainable through that? Is it the case of, will it help us live in our means or would the club have to always raise ongoing finances? Uh, no, I... That's no £500,000 absolutely doesn't secure our future financially. But as I say, working with, with the council, uh, and it's, this is where it's very difficult to go into detail, but also working with other individuals um, who, who may be interested in, in the future of the football club and, and becoming involved, um, we, will, we will ensure that, that financially this is a, a long-term plan. It's not a a three-month plan to get us through to December and then, then what happens then? This is, this is part of a bigger plan, which is so difficult to go into details, um, but, but I can only assure you that working really hard to make sure that it's something that, that the administrators can, can consider and, uh, and hopefully accept that it's a real and credible plan for the future. Is this... I think, sorry, Jay. Just to add to Jonathan from a supporters club perspective, because ultimately it's us that's asking for that money on behalf of uh, this whole you know group of people that's that's going forward. We we want to say that we've been part of this all the way through, so we're not just asking for this money for the immediate you know now. We we are part of the planning. Um, you know we've been working with Jonathan, working with the administrators, working with the local council, talking to you know, all of those parties. So it, the £500,000 is just an initial target, but there, is, there are things that would make the club sustainable going forward. That is a very good point to make, because obviously £500,000 is a big ask, and it's important to know what is going to be achieved by that. Is there a real threat to a potential takeover going through, or is this at an absolute worst a plan B, a backup plan to any of the deals falling through? I think it can be both. I, I think it's a really, hopefully, it will be seen as a positive step. It can be both. I think what it does provide is a safety net that if all else fails, we, we will try to make sure that the football club will survive. And, and that plan that we've been discussing um, and developing, I think, is, uh, is, ensures that the football club will survive. Obviously, the, we've got a lot to do. Um, and there's no guarantees here, but um, that's, what we're that's what we're trying to ensure here, that, that, that 
whatever happens, that this will be a safety net to ensure that we will survive. And uh, and I think it's great that the, the, the supporters um, and and are all coming together to make this hopefully make this happen. Um, we've been speaking with um, the FSA. Um, Caroline's been um, working hard with the FSA, and and we've been speaking to other clubs um, who've encountered similar similar challenges over the years uh, to understand uh, exactly their experiences and what's happened. So. Um, this is this is something that's kind of gathered momentum, and now now we're in a position where we, you know we can go out to the sports and say we need your help to make this to make this a reality. I think I think um, Jay, just to add to what Jonathan just said, there are some people already saying you know why why is it happening now? It's the thirty first next week. We we have put a lot of work in, and 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 it's been important to get stories from the likes of Portsmouth and. Uh, I think Exeter is another one that we've looked at. You know, it's really important to for, that we we knew what we were doing. There's no point in coming out with this campaign unless it has a real credible way forward for Wigan Athletic. It is very important. So obviously, it speaks to the relevant clubs because I know Portsmouth did the supporters trust when they were suffering a similar financial trouble. My, my question is next: is with the five hundred thousand pounds that you are appealing to raise by next Monday. Would this money be used to pay the non-disclosure agreement of £100,000? And can you also explain the finances involved in the process? How much money do we have in addition to fan pledges, which you are appealing for? Uh, Jonathan, if you can answer this question, that'd be great. Um, I can't go into too much detail on that. We've not been asked to, to, um, to, to pay anything for any sort of exclusivity. We're working... Closely with the administrators, I've I've been um, here um, since I was made redundant on, on the third of July um, at the stadium. Um, I think um, I've built a relationship with the, with the administrators, which means that um, I've I've helped them. Um, I guess my ten years' experience has, has helped them navigate the day to day operations of a football club albeit in extreme circumstances, and also the player sales as well. Uh, although I've not been directly involved in those conversations, my advice has been sought and, and I've offered my advice. Um, I think, uh, I, I think. what was the question? Sorry, Jay. What was it? Can you explain the finances involved in, in the process? How much money do we already have in addition to fan pledges? Because obviously... £500,000 is a lot of money in, in normal circumstances, like you say, and, and we are in a pandemic at the moment. So I know people are quite emotion, financially fragile. Even in League One, football clubs lose on average one and a half, two million pounds a year. We need to prove to the EFL that we have funding for two years um, to enable the football club to operate for two years. That's part of the insolvency policy of the EFL. So we've, we've got to make sure that, that, that we satisfy those requirements. And that doesn't mean that it all has to come from the supporter appeal. And that's, that's what we're working on at the moment to ensure that we can satisfy all those requirements. Uh, I must stress that the FL do not want to lose another football club and, and they, are, they are helping us to, to help to ensure that that doesn't happen. Um, and it's just a case, it's an ongoing process, but. At the moment, what we need to do is to make sure that we raise as much money as possible because that makes that job easier in the future and, and will give the supporters a, a bigger stake in, in the way the football club operates in the future. I think it's important to also discuss with the £500,000 you are planning to raise, what kind of deal would you be looking at? Is it a, a package deal which includes the, the stadium training grounds or is it in terms of more individual just the club? Uh, anyone could answer that one. It's, it's up to you too. I think I think we're focusing on the club initially, um, and we need to ensure that the football club survives. Um, I think that those questions will will come later. I'm aware of of the valuations of of the the, the, the properties, um, and uh, ultimately we need, we need a stadium to play football in, and we need a training ground to to train. Um, and I think those conversations will continue. Um, and obviously, the more the more assets we have, the better it is for the football club. But ultimately, we're, our first focus is, is, on, is on the football club surviving. Caroline, this is more a question for yourself now. 
what kind of processes need to be followed for this to happen? What does a support of trust need to be formed? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, so uh, again, um, it's not a, it's not an immediate overnight thing that you've got to think about this. So um, we're going to let supporters club are currently a not for profit organisation, um, and you're absolutely right. Um, we would need to become um, a supporters club in trust, uh, basically a supporters trust, and we we feel that with given all this situation, we would do that anyway. So we've already put in, in motion the wheels to make sure that that happens over the next uh, week or so. Um, so um, again, with the support of the FSA, they're, they're basically holding our hand through the process. We've done it with a lot of football clubs and, and they actually advise that supporters club become trusts, which offers a lot more protection for the, for the supporters groups anyway. So, so that is going to happen. We will have a supporters trust um, that is currently the supporters, we're going to let it supporters club um, and, and that will enable us to act if, if it's required over the next few weeks in, in this process. Absolutely. And Jonathan, linking back to yourself now, are the administrators entrenched in achieving a certain price for the club or has it been lowered given the sheer volume of asset sales we've seen over the last couple of weeks? And that would be a question that the administrators can answer. I can't answer that on the on their behalf. No problem at all. The administrators at the moment have said that there hasn't been any credible bids. Surely any offer of this club at this stage would be considered as credible given the few tangible assets that are left. But obviously the administrators can only answer that question. But if the five hundred thousand pounds bid and fundraising bid is successful. Will this be used alongside an investor potentially, or is it to buy the club outright? The, the funds that are raised will be used to fund the football club for the future. They won't be they won't be um, used to buy the football club itself. It will be money uh, deposited in a football club uh, account to be used for the football club um, for the future. So I, I think that it's important to get that distinction correct. Have you spoken to any potential investors about this fan representation, fan-led club? And would they be willing to obviously get involved with that bid? There's lots of ongoing conversations with, with people that um, care about Wigan Athletic and, uh, and would, would, would want to get involved in help saving the football club. Uh, those con conversations continue. Um, and... Uh, Whilst we don't know what it looks like at the end of it, uh, and that's why you know we can't give definitive answers, what I, what I will assure people is that, that, that Caroline, myself, a lot, a lot of people working really hard behind the scenes, and I know it's frustrating for supporters to not hear anything, and, and the administrators can only say so much that you know, they're um, restricted by non-disclosure agreements, and they're, they're working really hard to, to ensure that this football club survives as well. So. Um, there's a, as I say, it's, it's difficult to, to go into detail, but yes, those conversations are taking place as well because I think the stronger we come out of this, the, the, the better for our future. And, and I think it is important to stress that the future, Wigan Athletic, um, if, if what we're trying to do is successful, will look very different to the one that we've, we've enjoyed the last few years. Um, you know, we, we have to aim for a sustainable football club that's 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 really important to the community, which it's always been, but certainly the losses that we've made over the last couple of years uh, have been unsustainable um, and uncomfortable for myself. We have, to, we have to aim to break even so that this never happens to Wigan Athletic again. I think that's really important. I think the part that the supporters will play in that is to, just to protect the club for the future and so that there's a lot of transparency about how we operate that we don't risk the future of the football club again. But first of all, we have to ensure that it's got a future. What level... Oh, sorry, Caroline, yeah, Caroline I think, continue. So, I think some, again, some supporters on social media are asking about that £500,000. Is it being used to buy the club? And like Jonathan said, you know, that's not the situation. But by raising that money, it ensures that stake in the club for the fans and the voice going forward to make sure that this never happens again and, and we want to make that distinction for fans that you know that's what this money is for 
absolutely it's for saving the football club and my question is is in terms of outlining a plan for the future what league would league athletic need to be in to be sustainable because obviously as you're seeing jonathan you are an expert when it comes to this the finances at the championship and above seem pretty unsustainable from the outside looking in with a lot of teams making millions and millions of uh, losses every year uh, clubs even lose, lose money in the Premier League, which I find absolutely astounding considering the money that's generated in income in the Premier League. It's about, it's about how clubs are, are operated. Um, the Championship is, is a disaster in terms of football finances, but there are clubs that demonstrate that it can be done. Uh, Brentford have proved that by smart player trading, by, by having a, a different model, rather than a, a model that relies on owners investing money every single month into the football club to sustain heavy losses, uh, that it can be done. And there are other examples of clubs that, that do achieve break-even, mainly through player trading. As you go further down the leagues, leagues one and leagues two, the losses are less. That's because the player wage costs are less uh, and the running costs of the football club are less. Um, but they've all got similar challenges and running a football club is, is not easy. Um, People always think that they can do a better job than the ones that are currently doing it, but it's not always easy to, to break even. Um, I, I think um, what is key is to ensure that, that, the, that, that, that everyone is aligned on what, what the football club is trying to do. And that's the owner, the, the executive, the supporters, the manager, um, and everyone understands what we're trying to achieve. And if, if, the, if the objective is to achieve sustainability, then that's what we have to try and ensure that every decision is made to, to ensure that we either break even or we, we trade players so that we do break even and reduce losses. Um, I don't think you can say, well, Wigan Athletics should be in, in the Championship or should be in League One. I think whichever division you're in, it's about, it's a, it's about uh, how, you, how you operate, it's about the decisions that you make, and it's about planning as well. A lot of clubs, um, fail because they don't plan properly and, and also they take risks and, and unfortunately Wigan Athletic are, are a prime example of that um, and I've been right in the middle of it um, and, I, and I certainly don't want that to happen to Wigan Athletic again. As we speak about plans and deals, would you be able to outline your plans for the future in, in a brief mission statement in terms of the deal you're, you're trying to produce and, and the pledges you're trying to appeal for because the fans really need to know and have clarification on, number one, what is my money going towards? Number two, will they save the club? And number three, will the club just need this as a stopgap until a new owner or will it be a sustainable source of income for the next couple of years? I think the plan that we are putting together, which is not finalised yet, um, will demonstrate that this isn't a stopgap. It has to be a long-term plan. We've, you cannot operate. In football, you cannot operate, you know, Every 12 months, what happens then? We run out of cash. We need to, to we need a new owner or we need to take a loan out. And a lot of clubs operate like that. But what I would suggest is that if the fans watch the video that's been, that's been produced, that, that's been uh, published today, I think that tells everybody where, where we see Wigan Athletic and what's important to Wigan Athletic. And every time I watch it, I fill up. So it, it's, um, it's a very emotional video, but it tells everybody what, who we are, our history, and what we're going to it should be about. And, uh, and we certainly don't want to lose that. Caroline, would you like maybe like to add to that with uh, what Jonathan just said in terms of the, the future plans that you're trying to outline in the future? I think um, we referenced Portsmouth earlier. And when we spoke to Portsmouth, um, it, it gave us lots of rays of hope for the future of Wigan Athletic because you know, the supporters were an integral part of shaping the last six years of Portsmouth. You know, it wasn't a stopgap. Um, they managed to hold the club out of administration. Uh, the fans trust were, you know, at the heart of um, basically turning the club around and getting them uh, a promotion. Now, obviously, we can't predict the future, but that's, you know, that gives us hope that this model can certainly work and we've done a lot of hard work so far. There's a lot more to come working together, but we need the fans on board with this, this campaign uh, to get through step one. Jay, Jay, I would also stress that if, 
if tomorrow or next week there is a there is a buyer for the football club that uh, that ticks all the boxes and the administrators complete that sale process, then that's that's great. We're, we're interested in, in the football club surviving, and the supporters' money that's raised could be part of that, uh, and that would be up to whoever whoever completes that purchase if they, if they do. Um, so I think there's a there's a number of ways in which this this fund that the supporters are raising could be part of the future of Wigan Athletic. What we're providing is is an alternative should that not happen. With donations to the football club, what will happen to pledges donated to the club? Uh, would the, the fan have an opportunity for individual investment uh, for shares in Wigan outside the support club uh, in a similar appeal to the 50 plus one scenario? Uh, Jonathan? Did I say Caroline? that, Caroline? Yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah, we, we, we looked... We looked at raising shares, um, but unfortunately time precludes us from doing that at the moment in time. So we had to focus on what was the quickest way to, to raise money to, in, to, to ensure that the supporters were involved in this project. Um, I think in the future, we will look at uh, perhaps different ways of, of raising additional funds, one of which is uh, issuing sh shares in the football club. I think what this is, is a, is a fund um, to the supporters club to enable them to have a significant voice within the club um, and for those pledges obviously there's different tiers and there are different benefits that, that accrue from those those funds so probably caroline's best talking uh, in terms of, of what that actually means in terms of uh, the actual pledges okay yeah so um like jonathan said we we did look uh, as uh, together at the potential of shares um, and this this see this is basically the best uh, way forward to be able to um, have fan invo involvement from ground level so you know everybody can get involved with this and it will mean that the the trust that they're donating to will have a representation and a voice in the eventual football club if, if this project uh, you know it ends up being part of the future of Wigan Athletic um, so we, we decided that we wanted it to be very different from the original crowdfunder. And so we wanted to give rewards back to fans uh, in terms of uh, what they were donating to. Um, so that's when we came up with this sort of tier system. Um, so, you know, at tier one, we were asking for £250 um, in return for uh, financial statements annually and, and um, for example, uh, attendance at... Uh, an annual meeting where we update on 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 how the season has gone and, and, and update on on things like that. That's one example. Um, and what it what that does immediately is it brings more fans closer to the football club, and that's sort of our mantra throughout all of this. And we we're asking fans if they can every little helps. Of course, every little helps. But given the timescales, we really want fans to commit to one of those tiers. £250, £500 or £1,000 gets, gets you and your name uh, in the, the next wave of Wigan Athletic, the future of Wigan Athletic. And, and you know, w we are happy together, myself, Jonathan, uh, the community trust, everyone who's worked together, we're looking at what those, you know, making sure those rewards are sustainable and they happen as long as we're involved in the football club. We also understand that it's a lot of money to ask people at a difficult time and yeah. if people can't afford it then just by helping by by raising awareness of of the situation by by sharing tweets by by, by doing you know we know that people's support is not just monetary there's there's a lot of people who are emotionally invested in this football club um and and that's that's really important as well it, this isn't albeit albeit it, it is about money it's not just about money it's about you know people's emotions and 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 the, the passion that they have for the football club so anything that they can do to help is much appreciated absolutely there's, there's more than one way you can help out especially in a time like this whether it's donating out in your own wallet or just sharing on social media it all goes a long way and for me the next question is in terms of the the campaign save our club what individuals have backed the campaign have the, have the local politicians uh, supported this have any former players former chairman got involved Caroline? 
Yeah, so um, so as we, we've already said, we are talking to the local council and they're very supportive um, of everything we're trying to do here. Um, you'll know that Lisa and Andy's been a good advocate of uh, making sure this football club survives and, and she still remains so. Um, I know that today, uh, Emerson Boyce, who's always been a fantastic amb ambassador for the football club, has backed this campaign. Uh, and, you know, he's back in the supporters club in terms of raising this fund and, and also, you know, galvanising the town, the community. Um, Tom Flower and the Community Trust are on board and, you know, they, they are part of this whole team of people who are trying to make sure the football club survives. Uh, and of course, Jonathan, um, who, you know, he's been working, uh, made redundant on the 1st of July and has been working flat out to make sure there's a solution and we really appreciate everything that, that he's done for the football club and, and, and undoubtedly will do going forward. My phone's been red hot this, this afternoon. Obviously, this, this is the, the actual details of how this is uh, where, we, where we've got to now has, has really only come about in the last week or so, although there's been a, you know, quite a bit of discussions and planning prior to that. But certainly with the launch today, my phone's been, been red hot with, with people connected with the football club. And, and I, I won't talk about names, but, but lots of people connected to the football club who are getting in touch now. And, and again, if that helps, ensure that we are here for the future then then we've done our job which is which is the most important thing why is the initiative being being launched so late in the day is it is it in terms of the amount of work you've needed to do to get to this point or is it just a case of it's getting a little bit worrying where the, the club's future is in grave jeopardy Jeff, Jonathan, I, I, think, I think the club's future was in jeopardy the day the administrators walked in to the football club unexpectedly um, very unexpectedly, and, and from that moment, you know, speaking with the administrators, they, they they couldn't guarantee that we would be here for the for the next season. In fact, they couldn't guarantee that we'd complete the the nineteen twenty season. So, so, um, we had to deal with that first of all, uh, and that process. The administrators had to understand what they were walking into because they'd had no conversations with with me prior to that. They hadn't seen anything to do with the football club. So. Then there was a process where I think it was 21 days where they had to to market the football club and um, and uh, offer the football club in terms of interested parties. Um, so that was that was 21 days from the 1st of July, and and I and I guess we all sat back and, and let the administrators do their job and, and that process. Uh, this is this has evolved over the last three or four weeks where. We needed to make sure there was a there was an alternative if that process failed, um, and and we saw how powerful the crowdfunder was at, this, at the initial stages of this this process, um, and it was ensuring that the supporters play a big part in, in the future of the football club, whatever happens, um, and and I think the fact that we can we are doing this to ensure that there is an alternative probably indicates where where we are in the process. I'm sure there are interested parties still talking to the administrators and, and again that's for them to discuss and not not for us to speculate and i'm sure there are interested parties but but we are providing an alternative but also a safety net um if that's not successful why do you think this is, is such an important alternative to have is is this a matter of almost life and death in terms of if the club for, for whatever reason can't find a buy on the August 31st does this ensure that the club will have an opportunity to have their, their future my my biggest concern a lot of fans is that we've we've all had some special moments supporting with Athletic we all want this to go on for a very long time I want my kids my grandkids to watch with Athletic and at this moment of time that's in jeopardy and what what is this deal how how important is it and, and why is it so crucial that the fans get behind you Caroline, Jonathan, the floor is yours. Uh, either can answer or you can both weigh in. I, I mean, I think we have an opportunity to change our football club for the better if this, if this is something that happens. Um, Jonathan's mentioned that it's going to be a very different football club, but I just think there are so many opportunities there that we, we've discussed um, for fan involvement, to become closer to the Wigan community, um, I mean, the council talk about every pound in Wigan passes through Wigan businesses. 
you know, we can make this football club a, a real part of its community. It is anyway, but we can do more of that through fan involvement. Uh, Sorry, Jim, my, my internet's <laughs> I think the 31st of August was set by the, by the administrators um, to, to, to set a deadline for this process and, and, and to try and speed things along. Um, and again, the administrators will discuss that, um, why they did that and, and, and the, the, the consequences of it. I can assure supporters that the football club won't start closing down um, after the 31st of August. The administrators have, have obviously monetized a lot of assets uh, which they had to do because there's no other way of generating income, unfortunately, um, in the current economic environment. And it's and so, unfortunately, they've had to sell players. Um, and that's got us to this point now. Um, I think we're looking forward to the new season, but we do need to have a plan. The EFL needs to have a plan. And what we are putting together is a plan that will ensure that we're going to let it can start the new season. We're working with everybody we've talked about to make that happen. And of course, we're all concerned that there's no guarantees that this is going to be successful or any other bidders are going to be successful. But I'm confident that there is a solution to this football, to this football club survival. Um, and we are working hard to be, um, to be absolutely sure that that will happen. I know you may not be in a position to answer this question, but say if the bid is successful and then you are in a position where you are going to become owners a sort of like athletic, how will player transactions work in the new season? Will you be able to sign players before the season kicks off? Obviously, we athletic have lost a lot of senior players through administration. It's a necessary evil. And uh, Jonathan, I think this will be a question more for yourself, given your football intelligence and, and obviously your background in football. I'm not saying Caroline doesn't have an excellent expertise in football, but Jonathan, would you be able to shed some light on this? I think my understanding is that as long as we exit administration in line with the EFL insolvency policy and we pay off the creditors that we need to, um, then we will be able to sign players. However, that will be restricted by the budget. So I'm not sure that we'll be going out there signing uh, expensive players on high wages that's that won't be the um the route for this football club in the short term that's for sure uh, we've still got a, a number of senior players um and and some very capable under 23 players yesterday we played a friendly against bolton wanderers uh, and that was a that was a, a strong side um obviously weaker than than last season much weaker than last season but but and, and i must commend the players that are that are contracted to Wigan Athletic. Um, you know, I was speaking with Sam Morsey yesterday and Jamie Jones. And these players are playing in friendlies um, despite everything that's going on. Uh, and their attitude has been brilliant. It's been fantastic. And all the staff at Exton and at the DW Stadium, the, all these people are working um, under very difficult conditions and, and they're working really hard for the football club. Um, and I think, you know, whatever team we, we put out, or, or that is put out on, on the 12th of September, 13th of September. You know, that would be an achievement from where we are now. Um, and and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I would suggest that signing players um, is, is probably a low prior, priority right now, uh, but it's something that will obviously, that will be considered, whoever owns a football club at that time, that'll be something that, that they'll consider. But we certainly will be able to sign players uh, within the, the regulations of, of squad sizes um, and the new uh, salary cap that's been introduced recently. I think it's important to also ask on, on the lines of player sales is what would happen to the player sale model at the football club? Will it be the case of impacting the academy and, and obviously outsourcing levels from the academy like we've done with Jensen Weir, Alfie Devine, Joe Gelhart? Because although we haven't seen the best of them at Wig Athletic and on terms of on the pitch, their contribution off the pitch has been massive because without those sales, we won't be sitting here talking about this potential opportunity to help save the club. One of the most upsetting parts of this process was seeing Joffe, uh, Alfie and, uh, and, um, and Jensen leave us before they'd really fulfilled the potential. There's, a, there's been eight years work gone into the academy by people like Gregor Rioch and Kenny, Kenny Williams and a whole host of people who 
who have built a, a culture and an atmosphere at the, the academy, which, which is fantastic. And it will, it will develop players. It will produce players of the right standard because there's good people there. And those three players, international youth players, were the future of Wigan Athletic. They were, they, were, they were designed to break into the first team and then be sold at the right time for the football club um, and, and repay the investment that we made into, that, into the academy. And it was, it was heartbreaking to watch those players go. It was fantastic opportunities for them. And, and, I, and I'm sure that, that uh, Joe and, and, and Jensen um, and Alfie, Alfie's already played for, for Tottenham's first team in, in the friendly and, and they, they'll be a great success. And the football club will benefit in the future from contingent payments and, and sell-on fees if they're ever sold by those, those clubs. So they actually saved the football club because during a period when the administrators first came in, they couldn't raise any funds at all um, to pay the wages, to pay the running costs. And the only way they could do it was to sell those players um, with special dispensation from the EFL outside of the transfer window. And so they were critical to the survival of Wigan Athletic. And uh, in some ways, that makes me proud of, of the academy, the, the, the work that they've done, but it was, it was hard to watch. And for me, if, if I'm part of the future of, 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 of management of Wigan Athletic, then the academy operating at Category 2 would be an absolutely essential part of this football club. It's, it's our research and development department it's it's how we will become sustainable uh, and if we can operate on that model where we're producing players of the, of the right standard they have to be good enough to play in the first team then that provides a sustainable future for the, for the, for the football club but also a platform to develop and grow and be more successful at higher levels so yeah the academy is really really important to this to this football club and that that's my belief and that's that's how i would want it to stay that's absolutely outstanding to hear because for me, the academy is one of the brightest, brightest parts of this football club because we've seen over the years how many talented players we've produced from, from Leighton Baines to Callum McManaman to Alfie Devine. We, it, it's an endless list, really, and, and that's credit to yourself and, and everyone who's made that possible. In, in terms of the process of administration, both yourself, Jonathan Jackson, Caroline, you've directly been interacting with the administrators. What do you make of the administrators and, and the job they've done? Um, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of stuff on social media. I know, Jay, that we are meeting with the administrator tomorrow and you'll get your chance to ask them questions tomorrow. Um, in, in my capacity as chair of the supporters club, they've been really open and honest. Um, they have worked with us and, and, and discussed things with us. And, and um, obviously we raised the crowdfunder to be able to support the running of the football club to ensure we fulfill the, the fixtures. Um, so it, we, we, I feel that they've kept those lines of communication uh, open throughout this process. So, you know, it's, that's, that's key. Otherwise, we wouldn't be at this stage now uh, if the administrators weren't talking to us. It's, it's, it's a really difficult job for them. They're walking into a business that they've no knowledge of in a difficult situation that's run out of cash. Um, and, I, and I think that, 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 that they're doing a very, very good job in difficult circumstances. Uh, they're never going to please everybody. In fact, they're going to upset a lot of people a, a lot of the time. Um, and I'm sure they'll, they'll probably admit that they made some mistakes, but um, the, their intentions uh, is, is to ensure there's a football club at the end of this. And, and they stated that the day they walked in and they continue to do that. And they've been here every day uh, since the 1st of July. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a complicated process um, and it's one that has many strands and uh, it's, it's difficult for them but, but uh, from my experiences with them and they've been very transparent with me as much as they can be obviously they, 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 uh, they can't tell me everything uh, but I think as, as the time's gone on they've, they've probably trusted me in, in terms of you know what my motives were and where my heart was which is in the football club and uh, and and as i say i think i think uh, people don't seem to trust administrators from the outside and i can understand why because they're selling our favorite players and uh, you know um, they don't always bring good news but i think that's the nature of the job absolutely and obviously with the administrators do you believe that they do have the club's best interests at heart and aren't just looking on the best deal for themselves in this? 
I know it's a difficult question to answer, but I know a lot of fans have been drawing criticism from that. And uh, it'd be nice to hear from both of you who have had direct interaction with both Paul Stanley, Gerald Krasner, Dean Watson from the administrator company, Burby's trainer. Look, look, they're not Wigan Athletic supporters, or they weren't the day they walked in. Um, they, they, and also administrators are expensive. Um, that's the nature of the job. Yes, they, they, and they do cost money. So um, I think they've, they've got a job to do, and they're doing that job in, in, in difficult circumstances, which is the nature of the job. So I guess that's probably a question that you, you need to direct to, to the administrators, really. But... Um, um, and I don't know all the figures. I don't know. I don't know in terms of the fees. I don't know what what they will charge. Um, and I, but I, but I do know is it, it all it's all public. And there's a report at the end of this that's posted on Company's House. So it is a very transparent process that's uh, on behalf of the creditors and and they are appointed by the court. So we have to trust that process and 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 see where we end up. What we're trying to do is is to pick up, you know, Wigan Athletic at the end of this process and. Uh, and plan for the future. Absolutely. And as two people who've been heavily involved throughout this, and, and first and foremost, I've got to thank you both for everything you've done for this football club, not just in the last few months, but for a very long time. You both should be really proud of yourselves, your credit to yourselves, your family and the football club. But how can you both review the last uh, few months since the 1st of July when we found out that shock news that the club had entered the administration? So if we start with Caroline, then move on to Jonathan, that'd be great. Um, review, Jay, you mean what my thoughts on the last few months? Few yeah, weeks? yeah, that'd be great. Um, obviously, it's been the most devastating time uh, for someone who's watched Wigan Athletic since I was eight years old. Um, you know, um, it's been a difficult year anyway, as you know, with everything that's gone on with COVID, and but it, it's been absolutely devastating. And to 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 be leading a supporters club in this time is is really difficult because you know that the fans are feeling exactly the same as you are. Um, we've, we've had our hearts ripped out. I've said that a few times today. Um, if you watch the video that Jonathan referenced earlier, I, I would challenge any Wigan Athletic fan to watch that with a dry eye um, because that's what's happened over the last few weeks. But we can either... Um, sort of sit back and let it happen to our football club or we can galvanise the amazing support of Wigan. We're different. I know everybody says that, it's cliche, but we are. Wigan, we're di Wiganers, we're different. And um, we've, we've already made massive strides to support our football club in the first few weeks. And now we are, once again, trying to take control of the situation and make sure that uh, there is that plan B sort of thing that Jonathan mentioned earlier. Um, so, so I suppose that's my review. It's, you know, it, you can either sit back and, and feel dejected or you can, you know, uh, work together to make something happen. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. I think from my point of view, mentally, it's been, it's been really tough. Um, I think you, you realise got to keep things into perspective we you know we've, we've got to you know health comes first and it's important to that you look after yourself and, uh, and you look after your family as well but you realize how important things are to people and this football club is very important to people and, and very important to me um it's been a ro real roller coaster because there are days where i've i've been totally despondent and i and, I, and i've thought I'm not sure what the future holds and what does the future look like without Wigan Athletic. Um, you know, personally and, and for everybody that supports Wigan Athletic, that, that can't happen. But it, but it has happened to other football clubs. And then other days I've been energised and, uh, and thought, right, OK, we can, we, you know, we've got to help to change this. There are times where I've been felt more comfortable because, you know, I get better news from the administrators. And then... You know, there, I guess there's, there's, there's milestones that you hit, you know, seeing Joe Geldert's time for Leeds United in his lead shirt, that was, that was hard. Um, you know, being relegated, um, losing the appeal, um, you know, seeing good members of staff leave, see, you know, seeing players leave, that, that's all been very difficult, but it, in, the, in the context of what does the future look like? So, it's been a real roller coaster. It's, it's not, we're not at the end of it by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, I think, I think 
staff here, um, also people externally. You know, the work that Caroline's doing, I'm getting, I'm getting phone calls from Caroline last thing at night, first thing in the morning, and, and Caroline's got a job to do as well. She's, she's, you know, at the school where she's deputy headmistress, and it's, it's. Um, I, I guess, I guess it's a combination of everybody coming together, the supporters, the staff that remain, uh, the players, um, and and just helping each other to get through this. And uh, it's very difficult to describe how I felt over the last seven, seven weeks. Um, I'll have to have a think about that answer and come back to you, but hopefully I've, I've been able to explain some of my, some of my experiences and, and what's gone on because, it, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been challenging, but I'm positive now. I feel really positive about how we, how we can achieve it. I know, I know come to this that's, that works for the football club, but hopefully puts us in a better place for the future. In fact, I won't say hopefully, it will put us in a better place for the future. That is a great message to say. And, and I think what the viewers and listeners will take away is the passion in both of your voices when you talk about the club. It means a lot to so many people and it's evident that it both means a lot to you, Caroline. You, you, you're such a busy busy woman. You're such an inspirational person for, for someone who, who actually works as a, as a head teacher at high school and balances this on the side. It's phenomenal, really. And, and Jonathan... To, to be at the club for so long, be made redundant in a really shock administration and then work for seven weeks for free. It just emphasises what a great character you are and a great role model for the athletic supporters and everyone at the club. So I think... You'll, you'll make me blush, Jay. You'll make me blush. It, it, you know, <laughs> yeah, enough about us. Ask us some difficult questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the next question for me is, it's a question everyone wants to know. It's the most simplest question is, Will Wig Athletic? We can, well, I need to actually say this again. I'm getting a bit too excited. Will Wig Athletic have a club next season, the season after, and in the future? I, I, I whilst I can't guarantee anything, I'm more positive now than I have been in the past seven weeks that that Wig Athletic will have a club for the future, um, and we will have a club that that, as I said, may be different from the one that we've we've seen in the past. But we can re we can rebuild. This will be a reset, uh, and I am confident. There's a lot to do. There's a lot that we need to achieve, and there's a there's a lot of, of discussions that we need to have, and, and and to get to where we need to be. And there are other alternatives as well. There are other solutions to this problem. But I think somewhere there, there will be a solution, and I'm more confident now than, than I have been in the last seven weeks. As I say, that we can Athletic will have a football club and we'll be able to move forward and look back on this. It's a very bad memory. Absolutely. And I think it's so important that the club's future is sustained. And my final question is to you. Uh, thank you so much to you both for giving up your time tonight. It's much appreciated. But how can the fans help you out? What do you need from the fans? Obviously, with the pledges. And, and also, a lot of the fans have been questioning what would happen if, obviously, another party buys the club. Will it be refunded back to them as well? Absolutely, Jay. So at this point, I do want to mention Murray Tom's at Crowdfunder. Um, unbelievable. You know, the, the, the setup that they've got there, obviously they're a business, but they are offering our second Crowdfunder completely commission free with no fees. And what that means is that if fans pledge to this campaign, uh, the £250, the £500, the £1,000, and uh, a buyer comes in tomorrow and we're unable to uh, you know, negotiate with them to, to, to have some sort of part fan ownership, all of that money, every single penny will go back to the original uh, pledge, people who pledged. Um, so we just want to reassure fans that that money doesn't come down to Wigan Athletic Supporters Club immediately. It's there whenever we need it to be able to do, um, to be able to do what, what the plan B is, what the plan is. Um, so we would ask, you ask, you know, what can the fans do? There's lots of things they can do. Obviously, they can pledge. Every little helps. We would love as many people as possible to um, get involved in one of those tiers of pledges. Uh, but spread the word. If you know that there's a local business, maybe that have uh, done really well over the past few months. I know there's not many of those, but there are some. Um, you know, get onto them. Um, you can also write to your local councillor. Um, at, or email your local councillor for your area and ask them to support Wigan Athletic uh, in order to ensure survival. Um, and of course, spread the word. 
because there are lots of clubs in a similar situation at the moment. So you know that Charlton are, um, you know, showing solidarity with Wigan on Twitter and social media. So other clubs might be willing to support us um, throughout this. So, so there's lots of things that fans can do over the next few days. That's an outstanding answer. Jonathan, can you add to that or has Caroline summed it up perfectly? No, Caroline absolutely summed it up perfectly. What I would add is, is that I would ask for the fans' patience. Um, this is a really difficult time and it's very difficult to give a running commentary on everything that's going on. Um, they're absolutely right to question things. They're absolutely right to, to show their concern and anxiety and, 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 and offer solutions. But, but sometimes I would ask that, you know, think about negative comments before, before they post on social media. Is that going to help? Um, you know, sometimes those comments can have a real detriment, detrimental effect on, on, on things, on, on the process and on, on the people involved. Um, we, you know, we're working really closely, as we've said, with lots of different people in within within the town and you know I, I, I saw the council getting criticized recently and the council have been absolutely supportive of what we're trying to do here which is which is great and uh, and as i said although um you know this isn't going to be solved overnight um the, you know i haven't got the money to fund the football club for the next two years um unfortunately um i, I wish i had but i haven't and uh, that's why we need to put something together that is sustainable for the, for the football club. Um, and I just would ask the fans, as Caroline said, the money is important, absolutely is important, because that provides the supporters with a voice um, in any football club going forward for Wigan Athletic. But um, just, just some patience and, uh, and I guess, although we can't guarantee anything, all I can guarantee is that uh, we'll continue to work as, as, as hard as possible to, to uh, to make sure that uh, the football club is in the best possible place it can be um, and do everything that we can do to, to try and make that happen. Absolutely, and it's, it's great to hear that. And obviously, I would like to echo that message to, to stay patient because I've seen a lot of fans on social media criticising various people. Administrators have been criticised, the supporters have been criticised, Wigan Council, and it's just the negative energy is just not, necessary it's not required and if anything it probably just delays processes um, I think it's important to also consider that although they're doing a job role there's a human being behind that person and it does affect them on a mental health point of view which is very important uh, my final question and I, I promise it's my final question and it's more for, for both of you how, how have you both been uh, on a personal point of view how, how have you been on a, a mental health standpoint because I think it's always nice to ask how, how have you been I think I've asked Jonathan several times whether he's been losing weight <laughs> throughout <laughs> all this. Um, yeah, obviously it's difficult for everybody. We're the same as every other fan who, who are feeling this, I think. Um, and what's been really important for me is to know that there's always people out there to talk to about it. And I know, Jay, you're leading on um, the mental health group for the, you know, for the supporters. Uh, and that's really commendable that you're doing that because ultimately there are people who feel the same way about our fo football club um, and, and just talking is really important so and making sure we look after each other throughout this is really important. Absolutely. Uh, Jonathan, how, how have you been yourself? I know you've been extremely stressful, extremely busy and are, are you okay on a personal level? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm positive. Um, I think you have to remain. You have to remain strong. It's been really challenging at times, um, but um, you know, I guess being the chief executive of a football club is a difficult, difficult challenge. Uh, lots of difficult challenges are thrown at you, and uh, this is the latest one. Um, I didn't didn't quite expect this, and uh, and there's a, been a lot of unexpected parts of it that uh, that, that come at you every day, and. Uh, I guess, I guess, how am I personally? I, yeah, as I say, I'm, 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 I'm positive, and 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 I guess I, you, you find resilience in yourself at times like this. And uh, again, it's it, it's a learning experience as well. Um, but it's also a sense of responsibility because because you know that we can all help to make this happen. But I guess in my position, I, I'm in a fairly unique position that I'm talking to the administrators and 
working with Caroline and the Sporters Club um, and interested parties. So, so I guess I'm in a unique position and, and I guess it, it kind of dawned on me a couple of weeks ago that it would be easy to sit back and let other people do this, but actually we need to, we need to make it happen and we need to work together. And, uh, and if we achieve that, then it'd be a great sense of achievement and uh, I'll be delighted at the end of it. Um, and I'll probably need a bit of a lie down then. Absolutely. I'd like to say a massive good luck for the, the Save Our Club campaign. And if you'd like to donate to the Save Our Club campaign, the link will be in the description down below. Also, the Wig Athletic Supports Club on Twitter are promoting it, and obviously with more information there. So if you need a bit extra after this podcast, uh, all the resources are there. I'd like to thank Jonathan and Caroline for being excellent guests tonight. Keep up the good work. And also to Wigan fans watching this, I think you'll both echo this. Uh, keep on believing and keep the faith because that's all I've got at the moment, hope. And with what we've heard tonight, I'm sure that the club's future can be saved. And we'll look back on this in a few years' time. But I think it's important to remember this part of history as, as a really sad time, but as a time where the fans came together, fought together. And we'll be remembered as a club that didn't just sit back and lie down when they're in administration and they fought it as one and progress with unity. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys for the for the next.